A youth wanders through the darkness, his heart no longer resonating with life. The vibrancy of once was is no longer apparent. As he proceeds through the blackened hued corridors and endless passages, moments of his previous existence slowly ebb away. The foundations that made him unique slowly dissipate like water droplets. The gradual steps sap more from him, until even the sternest memories have vanished. He knows not his name, nor his home, nor those he had cherished most. He is doomed to linger about the shadows, fated to become a phantom or specter, roaring out to be noticed. And yet, he still craves for the light, that persistent spark that prods his interest, to see what is beyond the shadows. And the light shall find him, but it is a light of ages long past. And what will he find there? Salvation or condemnation? Only fate will dictate where he will go from here. A breeze flows through a green meadow. The chirping of birds heralds another beautiful spring day. There is the smell of flowers blown by a gentle breeze. Scattered clouds hover in a clear blue sky like so many bowls of cotton casting massive shadows upon the landscape. The sun bore down, warm in its nature, to tickle all those below with its gleaming shimmer. It is here that a young man lay sleeping on the side of a long stretch of dirt road, dressed in a short hooded vest, wearing well-fitted and well-blossoming pantaloons. He lay about almost in a dream state, without a care in the world. His posture shows that he was resting of his own volition and was not struck down by assailants or forces of nature. The warm rays of the sun beamed in his face, and his expression was as pleasant as any person napping at midday. For a moment, though, this youth could hear the sound of graveled footsteps echoing in the caverns of his mind. They came in large numbers, then quieted, followed by the shuffling of a few pairs of feet, seeming to draw nearer and nearer before stopping as if only inches away. Suddenly, the sun was obscured from the youth's vision, like a cloud had draped over him from on high. But the cloud did not move. Triggered, the youth slowly opened his eyes of a rare and dazzling blue to gaze up at the sky. The light first blinded him, and he could see familiar faces, one such face was so close, that of another youth, silver-haired and dashing to behold. For a minute, he thought he heard this young man utter his name, and the youth responded on instinct, whispering in response, not fully cognitive of what he was interacting with. We do, he whispers. But the name disappeared from his memory, as the familiar faces he saw. Were they a dream? Were they a fabrication? If so, who were they? These questions plagued him only for an instant, in which the youth did not have time to come to terms with whose faces they were. Now he found himself gazing upon four new faces, the closest resembling the face he saw in his dream. But these faces were different, as they were more apparent and had clad bodies to go with them, each dressed in blue or gray frocks, double or single-breasted, with brass buttons and an accoutrement of belts and shoulder straps, dictating that the individuals before him were of military standards, with the exception that no armaments were upon them, save for enlarged keys that hung from their sides like sabers of so many officers. He's coming too, 
the young man closest to the sleeping youth declared. His hair was a beautiful silver, his eyes blue as the ocean. Is he wounded, Stratus? Another young man asked. This one shorter in stature with a white pith helmet, shading his sandy brown hair and awkward green eyes, clear and kind in their nature. I'm not quite sure, Terrain. We'll find out here in a minute. Stratus addressed the youth again, who groggily shook out of his dreaming stupor. Are you all right? I guess so, the youth replied. We found you unconscious by the road, Stratus declared, as he stood to full height. He reached out his hand to assist the youth from the road. Let me give you a hand. Can you stand? Yes, the youth said. Thank you. He reached up to Stratus's outstretched hand and grabbed firmly onto his clutching fingers. With a quick jerk, Stratus brought the youth to his feet. The youth gazed and realized that it was not just the four faces looking at him, but many others behind them. Before the youth, he saw ranks upon ranks of what could only be described as a large military outfit of some 1,000 men and women, or more, steampunkish in their appearance, with an almost imperialistic look about them. Many still in their ranks, but still a great plethora gathering around him and his saviors. The youth was nervous. Where exactly was he? And who were these people in uniform? Why were they all armed with large keys? More importantly, were they soldiers of sanctuary or ones to be feared? Are you a keyblade wielder? Stratus declared, breaking the awkward silence. The youth was puzzled. I don't know, he replied, rubbing the back of his head. Well then, what is your name? The youth thought hard. What is my name? He thought to himself. I should know what my own name is. It's on the tip of my tongue. Is it Sal? Samuel? Sean? Seamus? I know it starts with an S. Why can't I think of it? He strained and strained, trying to remember. But the name he once knew did not come forward. He could only shake his head with a saddened look. I don't know. I can't remember. Then where do you come from? Stratus inquired. Are you a native from here? Did you come from Scala Ad Kylum, perhaps? I don't remember, the youth replied. Now, at this point, there would have been some suspicion towards responses from one as young as the youth, and he could feel the tension growing. Was he merely being questioned, or was he being interrogated? He did not know. He slowly gazed into the eyes of Stratus, fearing he may see dissent in their nature. But instead, Stratus bore a demeanor in his eyes, not of suspicion, but understanding. Well, that's okay, Stratus assured him. He then approached the youth. His hand suddenly raised to grasp a charm around the youth's neck, a charm that even the youth wasn't aware of until he saw Stratus reach up, placing the emblem delicately between his thumb and forefinger. The emblem resembled a three-tiered crown, we are rather curious, though. How did you come by this emblem? This is the symbol of the Dawn Treaders. Dawn Treaders, the youth thought to himself. Who are they? Are they enemies of these guys? Allies? The question was answered immediately by Stratus. Are you one of us? he asked the youth. It was clear to the youth that the large body of soldiers before him was the Dawn Treaders as mentioned, but he had no recollection of ever meeting them. 
he was unaware that he had the pendant to begin with. How he came by it was unknown to him as well. I don't know, the youth replied. He gazed at those around him and realized that each individual bore the same symbol of the three-tiered crown. The emblem was apparent on many features of their accoutrements, on their breastplates, their belt buckles, the collars of their frocks, the shoulder boards and epaulets, the chains and heads of their keyblades, the insignias on some of their hats, the chevrons on their arms, their cartridge boxes, and even the massive green banners flapping in the gentle breeze bore the symbol. Did someone give this to you? Stratus asked again, breaking the youth's concentration. Do you think he might be a recruit? An equally tall youth with green hair and golden eyes declared. Possibly, Veritas, Stratus replied. He might have been trying to find us, Terrain added. Another possibility. All eyes were on the youth. Stratus looked into the sky-blue irises of the young man. Are you sure you don't remember anything? I can't remember anything. The youth gazed down, and then up again, as if to reassure his inquisitors. I'm sorry. Stratus only gave a subtle sigh. It's all right. He placed his hand on the youth's shoulder. I'm sorry if all this was intimidating for you. Clearly, you have no recollection of anything from your past, and we won't hold that against you. Why don't you come with us? Maybe we can help you find some answers. Thank you, the youth uttered. Is that why, Stratus? Veritas asked. We know nothing about this guy. I know. Stratus replied. But I don't think he has anywhere to go. I don't believe him to be a threat. Maybe if we help him, he might be able to aid us in finding out what we need to know. I see. Very well, then. Stratus turned to a tall man, dark in skin and gray in uniform, wearing a helmet equivalent to a spiked German pickelhaube. Valor! Yes, Valor replied. Assemble the troops. Valor turned to the ranks of the curious dawn treaders. Puffing at his chest, his voice rumbled out with a deafening roar. Dawn treaders, he declared. Assemble! Form your ranks! Without question or hesitation, each lower rank of the Dawn Treaders rallied to their respective positions in their massive block formations, almost as if they were going on instinct, knowing where to go, despite the chaos of their comrades scurrying to their positions. The rumbling of their feet and equipment were thunderous, overpowering the natural sound of breeze and birds of the meadow alike. And as the roaring of boots and brogans had suddenly bellowed to drown out the sounds of the meadow, so too did they fade into oblivion, as a storm in the distance, once again giving to the calm of chirping wildlife. Follow us, Stratus declared. The youth made no argument, and followed the four men to the front of the columns, past the soldiers with key blades fixed at their right shoulder, past the officers in the outskirts of the columns, past the ranks of drummers at the front, and before the head banners of the outfit. The youth was slightly apprehensive, even though he was assured by those present. Suddenly, he felt a hand gently place itself on his shoulder. He turned to see little Terrain smiling at him. Don't worry, Terrain said. You can trust my brother. He's the best. He is the leader of the Dawn Treaders, after all. The youth was still unsure. There were some mixed reactions to his presence. Stratus took to the front. His demeanor suddenly changed. He acted not as a peer to the others, but as their commander. His command once again broke the sound of the wild and the natural silence. Dawn Treaders! He thundered. 
He raised his hand and swung it before him with great strength. Forward! Forward. Instantly, the sound of drums came bellowing in unison as the musician ranks clamored in tempo to the stride with the soldier's pace. There was a majesty that made its presence known with the marching of a thousand pairs of feet coinciding with the rolling of the drums. The cadence seemed most intimidating in its tone, but to the youth they were but muffled beats lost in the canyons of his deep thoughts. Suddenly, he heard a soldier's voice steadily rising from the rumble of the drums. It started only as one voice, but then another joined in, followed by another and another until the echoing of singing voices drowned out even the beating of the percussion instruments before them. The song bore the same chords in the melancholy tune, Will Ye Know Come Back Again, with the lyrics almost identical. How this came to be is unknown, but in this distant world of existence no one was none the wiser to that fact. It was this song, however, that suddenly perked the youth's ears, not in its tones, but in its lyrics. Though the rest of the lyrics were obscure to the youth, it was the mentioning of the name for the character involved in the ballad that triggered a memory. His saddened gaze perked into a zealous smile. What do you know? He said with a subtle giddiness. This caught the interest of Stratus and the others. What is it? Stratus asked. Why do you look so happy all of a sudden? My name. The youth gazed at him. I remember my name, Sora. My name is Sora. Sora, eh? Stratus became more inquisitive. Do you remember anything else? Sora's smile once again disappeared. No, not yet, he replied. Stratus only smiled. Well, don't worry. The rest will come in time. The youth now bore the name he had lost, Sora. He now had a title that his new acquaintances could address him by. But it was only a start, regaining everything that he had lost. Hearing to the echo of the soldier cadence, Sora now looked to the horizon, believing that the apprehending of his old memories would be acquired on a brand new adventure to rediscover his past and the life he left behind. End of chapter one.